Well, hello everyone. Hi. Welcome to Playframe and welcome to Slice and Dice. This is a game that I've been enjoying quite a lot on my own time the last couple of weeks. Uh, it is a roguelike that uh, runs on dice rolls and it is mechanically very simple, but it has a lot of depth to it and uh, just a lot of stuff in it as well. Uh, I figured some of you might be way into this. Uh, let's start by just kind of seeing tutorial stuff on a nice, simple, easy classic mode run. So, you can see here, we have our five fighting heroes, and we have our enemy side over here. Uh, choose a blessing. So, we've got four different blessings that we could start this run with. Let's see. Um, all monsters replace the left side with blank, uh, which will make more sense in a little bit, but that actually seems like a really, really nice, good one to start with, so maybe. Uh... Bolt spell. So this would add another spell to our list of options. And a pretty potent one. I was I was not sure exactly, like... I've, I've not played enough yet to really be able to see what all difference the difficulty setting you choose makes, because it's a 20-floor run regardless, but uh, given the quality of the blessings they're starting me out with here, it, it kind of seems like uh, <laughs> that's one of the key differences. Just the sort of big boosts they give you. Uh, all monsters start vulnerable. That's also quite nice. That's basically just one additional damage they would take from every attack. Or, uh, there's exactly one item in the inventory. If there's exactly one item in the inventory, all heroes copy all unequipped items. That's a wild one. Let's go with... You know, the leftmost side of the die is often where some of the most scary abilities live. This seems like a good way to make sure that the offense against us is minimized, so yes. All right. So, enemy turn first. The enemies have rolled their dice and selected their attacks. My characters each have a die associated with them. You can kind of see the color coding happening over here. If we uh, right-click on any one of the enemies, we can see uh, what their die looks like. Here are all the sides of their die and what they do. They've uh, you can right-click on any one of these to get more of a specific description, but you can see the number of pips here. That determines how much damage or healing or whatever it will do. So let's see. This is just a basic attack that does four damage. This is an attack that does one cleaving damage, which will hit whoever they target and also uh, the characters on either side. So this goblin is currently using this cleaving attack, targeting... Uh, our splint here, our little red character, but it's also going to do one damage to either of these characters here. The boar has their own die doing uh, two damage to us with that little uh, tusk move. Two damage to the top and bottom enemies. Ah, I see. It's target specific ones. We can see here their number of uh, hit points. We can also see on our hit points, some of them are yellow. These are the HP that these uh, little party members are about to lose, depending on what we do. So like you can see the boar here targeting these two, taking two HP from both of them. Goblin's going to be taking one HP from each of these. So here's our the dice that we rolled, though. So uh, let's see. A couple of them came up duds. That's what the X's are, so that's not great. This one, though, came up with a two damaging attack. Seems pretty nice. Sure. I will lock that one in. This one would give me two mana. It's a single use thing, so I can only use this side of this die once in this round or this uh, particular fight, but not bad. It's not a bad start. I'll take that one as well. And this one. One damage and also vulnerable. Vulnerable, the target takes plus one damage from dice and abilities this turn. Also not bad. Sure. I'll take that. So now we've got two dice that uh, kind of suck, but that's okay. We can re-roll them twice. Still bad on that front. This one... Well, this character definitely specializes in doing defense. These are like shielding moves, which can reduce the damage that a party member takes. But they also have options for like uh, single HP attacks here. Honestly, the Prodigy's getting hit pretty hard. Maybe it would not be a bad idea to re-roll until we can get a shield on them. Or try to. Odds are good of a shield. Hey, there we go. I'll take that. Prodigy, disappointing. But that's fine. We're out of re-rolls. So, you can click on a hero to use their dice. Uh, 
or gain mana in this case, because Splint's move here is going to be getting us two mana. So let's do that first. Okay, they've used their die, and now we have two mana to work with, and these three spells. So uh, this spell, Burst, is one that is always there as a default. The other two spells that we have here are coming from the particular characters we have that uh, it's color-coded after. So Splint has this move, Bandage, which uh, heals and shields uh, three people, kind of in a cleaving pattern, similar to the boar's attack, or similar to the goblin's attack, uh, but can only be cast once each fight. Scorch does a single damage uh, with cleaving and can only be cast once each fight as well. So single use spells. Not the best spells, but that's okay. These aren't the best fighters yet. We're just getting started. Let's open up with the scoundrel's move, which will uh, soften up one of our opponents. Speaking of our opponents, let's look here. We see these little uh, symbols here next to their HP. The goblins says that it will flee if it is alone. So if we could take the boar out, the goblin would run on its own and we wouldn't even have to fight it. The boar, though, has one of these fancy little HP here, which must be removed individually. So no matter how strong of an attack you hit them with, uh, it'll only take one HP off or if it's one of these HP here. So we could not one-shot this boar, is basically what it's saying. So let's see what we can do to the boar, since it'll make the goblin go away. First, let's... Hit it with that to make it vulnerable, which will mean it'll take more damage from everyone else's attacks this turn. So this will do three damage instead. Not bad. And then we could do burst, which would do two damage or provide a shield for two, depending on how we wanted to use it. It will not defeat the boar. I think even with the vulnerability, well, I'm not sure. We'll see. Nope, nope. Gonna have to do one more attack on the boar to get that last one done. So we can't kill it this turn, that's fine. Let's shield the prodigy to give them another chance Next round. So the attacks go off. We take our damage. The enemies set up their next attack, which are two very strong attacks. The Prodigy will be killed this turn if we do not do something about it. Uh, the plus one there that you see is basically saying, okay, this attack is going to knock out not only these three HP that it has remaining, but also one additional one. So if you're wanting to prevent this, you need to shield them or heal them or do something to get them out of that sort of... Uh, <laughs> Zero HP death there. Let's see. This is a very good shield. I'll take that. Uh, this is one that will heal for five HP, but it is single use. So this side of the die would get turned into a blank this turn. If we used this. And for the rest of the fight. This is another one of the single-use mana. I guess I should kind of show what, like... So we've got five different party members here that are each different classes. Scoundrel, Fighter, Defender, Splint, and Prodigy. Each of which has a different loadout of dice. The Scoundrels is very disappointing right now. All of these uh, characters you start out with at the very beginning are not going to be super great, but they get upgraded as you go. So let's see. The only two moves they have remaining at this point are this, which does one damage to all enemies, or this, which uh, we used last time, which kind of one HP and vulnerable status. The fighter has, is honestly not too bad starting out. Lots of damaging options, some shielding options, no empty parts of their die at all. They'll guarantee do something. Defender, much more on the shielding side, as you can see. Splint, kind of a healer, has two single-use healing abilities, two single-use mana regaining abilities, and also this spell here, the, that's where Bandage is coming from down here. And the Prodigy, which will get you, it's basically built to get you a lot of MP that you can then cast uh, damaging spells with. So that's basically all they do. So this is the best outcome we could have for them. So let's take that. Uh, the rest of these though, I feel like, I feel like we could do better. We're actually not missing a lot of HP. So doing healing, our spells and abilities will go off before we take the damage. So doing a lot of healing up front won't it could potentially save... No, it wouldn't even save Prodigy. It's not very useful. Let's keep rolling. It doesn't really matter. As long as we get one damaging attack, which we now have, the boar will get defeated and the goblin will run away. So we basically won at this point. We'll go ahead and lock that in. Boar leaves. Goblin leaves. All right. And there's a round done. Heroes fully heal between fights. Thank goodness. Uh... 
So to continue, we will get an upgrade. And they're somewhat randomly generated upgrades. Uh, or it's like, it's random which of your party members will have the option of upgrading, and there are several random upgrades they might get kind of from within their class tree. So the scoundrel could become the trapper, which would have two of these, dodge all damage and enemy effects this turn, and two of those vulnerable ones, and kill an enemy with four or less HP. Also, it's ranged, so it can hit enemies in the back row, like this one. See here how it's kind of in the back row here? We would not be able to target this archer until the goblins were gone, but uh, if we happened to land on that side there, we could just one-shot this archer and uh, save ourselves some pain. So that's not bad. Alternatively, we could turn Splint here, our kind of healer, into a Fey, which has two of these. Target gets plus one to all pips this turn, and it heals for one. Not bad. This heals for one and gives you one mana. This does one damage to an enemy and also weakens them so that they uh, get minus one to all of their pips this turn, so they do one less damage or one less whatever each turn. It's a tough call. Mm, I do kind of want both, especially this scoundrel's really bad. <laughs> Four dud sides of their die is just terrible. They can do so little. Let's, uh, much as I would love to have a little more healing possibility, let's get the trapper out here. There. They're upgraded. They've got more HP as well. Next round. Okay. I'll take some MP. I will... Uh, with. There's no healing to be done right now, so that's useless. Um, given, unless we really luck out and land on that uh, ranged attack die on the trapper, there's no way we can hit this archer. So our only choice otherwise is just to take the goblins out first and then get them. And this goblin I want to prioritize because they're doing three whole damage right now. And targets must have the least HP. Okay, so this tar this particular dice side can only target an opponent with the least HP, which is Splint or Prodigy, I guess, in this case. But I don't want that to happen. If I can stop it. If. Yeah, let's re-roll all of these. They can do better. There it is. Hooray, I'll take that. That will help a lot. And honestly, not terrible. I'll, I'll take the one MP. That'll mean that between the two of these, we'll have four. We'll be able to cast burst twice. That'll do four damage. We might, depending on how good our attack rolls are here, we might be able to take another goblin out. We might be able to win this in one turn if we're very lucky. So let's take that because that's the best damage defender here can do. And cross fingers on fighter rolling one of these two pip attacks. Or do we need it? We don't. No, we don't. This should be enough. So, first things first. Take you out. Goodbye. Then... Oh yeah, tutorial is kind of showing stuff I've been explaining, but like... Uh, Shows you how the HP display works. Yellow means incoming damage. Uh, green means incoming poison. So if your character is poisoned, that means that's an addition. That's like shows how that HP is going to get lost. Um, let's go ahead and get our MP. This is showing us that we'd only be able to keep three of these going into another turn. So we need to spend at least that one so we don't lose it or waste it. Let's go ahead and spend all of it on two bursts on this goblin here. And then, yeah, finish it. The other one runs. We win. Nice. So you see how this kind of basically works. Uh, <laughs> very simple mechanically, but uh, there are so many different classes. There are so many different kinds of enemies and so many different moves that can be on these dice that... Uh, the tactics gets very interesting. So this time, since we won that round, rather than a class upgrade, we will get an item. We could get a cloak, which will replace the middle side of a die with dodge all enemy, uh, all damage and enemy effects this turn. Not bad. Or barkskin. Immune to shields, so that character could not be shielded 
but they would get two more max HP. I don't love either of these, to be honest. The middle slot tends to be a pretty decent one on most characters. Not their best one, but pretty good. And the Trapper already has that on a middle slot. I don't know if I really want that. We're still very early in the run, so these are only level one items. They are certainly not the best kind of ones you could be getting. I guess I'll take this one. I don't... I'll probably put it on... Prodigy, maybe? Prodigy or Splint, whoever's got the least HP, for whom 2 HP would make a big difference, but... Not being able to shield them kind of sucks. I could see getting rid of this item before long. Let's see. Let's put it on Prodigy. You have two slots where you can equip items. Uh, boop. There we go. So now they have six HP. We just can't put shields on them, which is a little worrying. Okay, next round. Heal does nothing for us. This is great. That'll get one of these archers taken out. Shielding also probably a good idea because I don't think we're going to be able to take... Yeah, like, we'll be able to take one of these archers out, but the, re the other two are still in the back row. And... Unless we can manage to get a lot of MP out to cast Scorch twice, I don't think we can do anything about them. So having some shielding would probably be good. Let's re-roll the rest of these. That's decent. Is that the most MP? Well, it's not the most MP they could do, but... It's something. Really hoping for this one to re-roll well. Yes, exactly what we need. Awesome, okay. Lots of MP to work with. Let's... Will Scorch hit all of them? I really hope it will. Ah, oh, it only hits the front row. Bummer. Okay, never mind. That's fine. We can still take one of them out. Which one, though? Who's most dangerous? We should take out one of these two that's targeting... You can kind of see their target here with a little color at the edge. Or you can select them to show who they're targeting. Uh, two of them targeting fighter is quite a lot of pain. Then again, we could shield fighter. Eliminate almost all of that damage they're taking. Or no, let's, let's shield trapper and eliminate all of that damage instead. We'll just take one of these two out. There we go. Monsters show their intentions and you get to respond. Incoming damage is shown in yellow. Right, yes. Okay. Defend you. Two scorches will not kill anything. Two bursts will at least get rid of one rat. Or, ooh, we could do a burst and a scorch. And that will mean that the fighter can then kill... Okay, this could actually... Well, no. No, that's still... Well, will it? Let's try it. Scorch first. I don't know why it hit those two. Oh, it cleaves. It doesn't... Okay. I misread instructions. That's fine. Whatever. Can still take one of these out. And mostly defeat this. Didn't go exactly as I planned, but I guess I didn't read close enough. When you're first starting to play the game, there will be lots of new symbols that you do have to highlight to kind of read and strategize. As you play more and more, you start just recognizing what a lot of these effects are and mean, and being able to make decisions even quicker. So, MP good. This, These are all very low HP enemies, so weakening them is not all that useful. We should be able to one-shot most any of these. That'll be worth keeping. Honestly, this is enough to defeat them at this point. Because, yeah, even regardless of the vulnerable state, we could use this to take out the rat, that to take out the archer, and this to take out the other. Yeah, this is enough. What the hey, do you want to you wanna turn? Nope, fine. All right. Rat. Archer. Done. Okay. 
upgrades wise. We can turn our defender into a guardian. So rather than this layout, we would have one more empty space, which I don't like, but a cleaving attack for one. A three shielding uh, defense, which is good, but also has engage, which means that if the target is at full HP, it would give them six shields, which is great. Or this, which does a cleaving effect, so it would shield three people, or up to three people, for two. Also very good. A very good defending option, but one that may potentially go bad on us. Or we can turn Prodigy here, who is really just about... Oof, yeah, we need to replace this. This is not good. With a Caldera, who has only one dud spot compared to four. And uh, two mana gain spots that are reusable. They don't disappear on use. Uh, like two of these, which do one damage and get you one mana. And this, which is a single use, but uh, does three damage and does twice as much damage on targets that are half or less HP. So if we could get the alpha down to half and then cast this, it would do six damage instead. So that's pretty cool. And it'll replace one of our spells with... Scald. Two damage to all damaged enemies. Alright, that's... It's not bad. Not bad. I feel like this is a better... Prodigy is much less useful than Defender right now. I think this is a better upgrade. Alternatively, you could take a random two-tier level up if you didn't like either of these and just roll the dice on maybe getting something better, but I like this. Okay. Since we upgraded them, we need to re-equip this, and I think this is actually going to go on splint now, because Caldera has 6 HP at this point. Still not a great item, and I'll probably stop using it after a certain amount of time, but... Fine for now. Moving on. Let's pick up the pace a little. That's going to be a lot of damage. That's going to be 6 damage on one attack, uh, and this is just 3. A lot more HP on this, though. So, okay, we got a good defending move there. That's nice to have. What do I want most from Caldera right now? Honestly, that's probably the best thing to get at this point. I'd love to get a little more MP if I could. But we'll, we, got, we got two rerolls. We'll see. Hmm. Worse. Alright, not amazing. Trapper is not helping us right now, but also you can undo some actions, which is nice to know. If you make a mistake. Uh, let's get four damage done. to the. We can just basically do six damage to the alpha this turn, block a little bit of the incoming damage, and try to get the alpha down as quick as possible. Two bursts. There. And... Hmm. Trapper has a decent chance of being able to avoid damage entirely. So, let's... Uh, like, Fighter is just also just a more all-around useful every turn class, so let's go ahead and defend you. There. Negate that damage entirely. We definitely need to get that alpha taken care of, or just use this. Now, uh, if we use this here, the Trapper will take zero damage whatsoever this turn. Well, they won't do any offense, which that part's not great, but still, not terrible. I would love to get that, uh, <laughs> that one down there, if we can. Healing also good this time, though. That could also potentially save the Trapper. Hmm. Yeah, it would. It would leave them with one HP and the chance to do more damage, actually. So let's cancel that. Can I? I think there's a way to do it. There we go. Yeah, so let's click on that one. There. Um, once you've re-rolled, the dice are locked in, but until you do, you can remove them. So this would heal for 5 HP, which would save Trapper this turn. 
I like that. The more offense we can do, the more likely we can get rid of this alpha here. That's not the way, though. Guys. Okay, well. Not incredible, but... You're alive this turn. Hooray. And here, we'll save you with... 2 HP. Don't spend it all at once. Uh, keep wearing the big one down. It's hurting much more. And it also has the ability, if it rolls these, to summon another wolf. So we definitely need to get this one out of here, if we can. If there's a skull on the end of the turn button, uh, hero's about to die. Yeah, they'll kind of warn you with a little skull on this, which is good to have the extra reminder, just in case. Okay. A lot of incoming damage still, but we can take the alpha out. Hooray. And then start working on the regular wolf. More mana is good. I'll take it. Sure. If we can do enough damage, if we can manage to do six damage total between these four, then we can just go ahead and end this this turn. Not really how you do it, squad. Okay. Underwhelming, but that's fine. So Fighter, who would be in trouble right now, is going to be in a lot less now, because the damage they were about to take has been negated. Splint's still getting hurt a bit, but that's fine. Guess we could bandage, heal, and shield one. Eh, that's... Not going to really do a whole lot. One more turn ought to do it. There we go. That's really all the damage and more that we need. Goodbye. There we go. All right. Another item this time. And these might be a bit better. We could go with the Garnet, which is plus one to incoming healing, which hmm, it's all right. Or Twin Daggers. Replace the top and bottom sides with one damage cantrips. Cantrips are interesting because they activate every time you roll the die and they pop up face up. Even if you re-roll, that damage just happens to a random enemy immediately. And that can get... If you get a lot of these cantrips going on a bunch of characters, can actually add up really quickly. I like that one a lot. Let's take it. I don't know who to put it on. Who do I want to put it on? The fighter, because, like, at best, the fighter rolling either of these is just one damage, and I'd probably re-roll it anyway. Kind of also true on the defender, but, uh, yeah, it could work for either one, really. And, in fact, let's, let's do it on the defender, because if I roll just one damage on the fighter... There's a possibility I could get one of these two, so I probably would re-roll to try to go for it. Like, that one damage is the most that Defender can do anyway. So this is just kind of strictly an upgrade. It's an upgrade in both cases, but I like this one. Okay. Um, what's our situation here? Goblins, which will run if they're alone. A snake which doesn't have any special things going on here, but their attack, their attacks all do damage and poison. Which would keep on doing one damage per turn. We should definitely take the snake out quickly. And then just choose one goblin to focus down. Let's say... Sure, these two. This one. This one. And let's just re-roll this one a couple times. Can trip? Aw, oh, come on. You can do it. Boo! Defender. Disappointing. Okay. Start by 
softening you up, then it'll just take... Eh, I guess it'll take two attacks to take you out either way, but... Okay. No one dying this turn. We're fine. Because your characters heal to full at the end of the fight, so long as they are not killed, then... Even if they're at low HP, it's fine, so long as nobody's dying. That's just what you're wanting to really avoid. If they die, they're not gone for the rest of the run, fortunately. They will come back if you win that fight, but they'll come back at half HP. So they'll be a little bit more vulnerable going into the next one. So you don't want that... Like, it's fine to let someone die if you need to to win a fight, but you don't want to do it too often because that will just put you on the back foot going into the next fight, which may be all the difference you need. But there, the cantrip worked. Did one little extra damage to that goblin there. That's great. Um... We have all we need here. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and end the round. Goodbye and goodbye to the other one. Okay. All right. Oh, this could be a tough one. So Splint could become a medic, which has... It's a lot of HP recovered. That's like potentially six HP recovered in one uh, go. This version does two health to one person and, like, leaves a regen effect on them, which heals for either one or two for the rest of the fight for them, which is pretty great. So a little bit of mana gain. I don't love this, but... Uh, set a hero to four HP. For just a single mana. That's not bad. Like, if someone was very low health uh, and about to take a little more damage, being able to just use one MP to get them back to four HP would save them that turn. That's not bad. This armor, though, potentially even better. An attack that does three damage, but has to target the enemy with the most current HP. Shielding for four. Shielding three people for one. Or uh, a shield and smith. Target gets plus one to damage and shield side, uh, sides this turn. Interesting. This is much more of a healing and support. Like, they could do three damage, but most likely they're just going to be healing someone or making them stronger. I don't love having two dud sides over here, but every side they do have is great. Let's go with the medic. And then... I guess let's put this on Caldera. If it's got to go to somebody. Okay, so two damage to everybody from Slate here, and four damage from the Militia to the fighter, which is a little scary. What does that shield mean? If an enemy I target gets plus five shields, I flee. Ooh, neat, but I don't think that's going to be terribly likely. Nope, impossible. At least I think it is. I don't think anybody else has a shielding thing in there. No, no, not possible. So we just need to take this out. Um... Which I think we can pretty reasonably do. You see here, though, the slate is going to be much more of a headache to take out because we basically have to hit it five times for any amount. A little obnoxious. Let's take these two and re-roll the rest and hope for some more cantrip hits. Nope. Come on. Well, better than nothing. You do that. I think we can take the militia out, and that's going to make this way more manageable. So, two bursts, and that. There we go. Not nearly so scary now. Yeah, go ahead and shield yourself. That's fine. It's just one. Okay. If we can just hit it five times with anything. This little with vulnerability, which I don't know. I don't know if that overrides this HP effect, but I'm very curious to see. Um, sure. Just any amount of damage, really. Uh, 
a two heel cleave could be pretty useful across the center and medic has no damaging abilities other than just getting us more mana which is low likelihood so let's take that just in case we need to buy more time and hope for some cantrip rolls dang it dang well better than nothing let's see how this works so one and vulnerable will this do two damage then nope vulnerable does not matter on this thing just need to hit it five times total so we can hit it with a burst shield you heal these three nice we're doing fine okay oh and it ran nice very good so um and that's the thing that can happen I, I think I might have uh done this before so I didn't do the tutorial pop-up but uh lots of enemies have kind of conditions under which they might just run if they are alone and have very little HP left um Usually it gives you the choice of whether you want to finish them or let them run, but uh, there's basically no strategic advantage either way. It's just kind of up to you whether you want to finish them yourself or just let the round end automatically and automatically win. Uh, and you can set it to auto-do that, so I just told it to auto-do that. And all right, two item options. A longbow. Replace the top and bottom sides with two damage ranged, which is not bad at all. I might take that. Or enchanted shield. At the start of each turn, self-shield for one. Hmm. For some characters with certain... Like, this could synergize in cool ways. I'm a little more compelled by this. Like, ranged damage options are very nice, and... Two damage, not bad at all. I feel like there will always be some character for whom this is useful. Who to put that on? It's more damage than Caldera could do with these two spots, but these also generate mana, which is important. These cantrips are great. Honestly, these are just strict upgrades for the fighter's attacks with no loss whatsoever. Let's take that. Yeah, like for a basic level, like level one or tier one job, we're kind of up to tier two jobs for a few of them now, but as a tier one job, especially with this, fighters, actually not bad. Very basic, but not bad at all. Next round. Uh, tier three items are about three times as good as tier one items. There you go. It's good to know. Okay, so first ogre missed. That's great, and this one's going to do one damage to everyone. These yellow pips uh, mean plus one pip to all sides this fight. So basically, every time we cost them this particular HP, it will upgrade every one of their dice by one pip. So the more we weaken them, the scarier they get. So we don't want to weaken them equally and leave them both in the fight a long time. We want to focus one down at a time as quick as we can. So let's... Yep, four damage. Good. Uh, yeah, I think two damage is the most fighter can do, right? Yeah. I'll take it. These can be better. Good. I'll take that. One more. All right, sure. Um, Fighter has the least HP right now, so let's get the every turn regen going on you, since the healing effect is wasted on everyone, but... Actually, no, let's put it on... Eh. Let's put it on Caldera, because Caldera can't be shielded, so having regen going every turn would be potentially useful if this gets dragged out too long. We'll shield fighter. We'll do this. Kill an enemy with four or less HP. I don't think we can get the ogre here to four or less HP, but let's see. All right, they're powered up a little bit, as you can tell from the grr, and also the little plus sign, which is a little more clear. Uh, nope, 5 HP, alas, but we can almost kill it, which is pretty good. No valid targets, wait. 
Wait, really? Hang on. Oh, I thought it would do... Wait. Really? Why is this not working? Does this attack, like, prevent? No. Can you not just do four regular damage to... to uh... I guess that's how this works. I thought this did four damage or kill, just insta-kill an enemy, but I think it means that, like, this will only work if they have uh, four health or less. I see. Okay, I, I misunderstood how that worked. Good to know. Alas. That's fine. We're not taking a lot of damage this turn anyway. But this one is definitely getting stronger, so let's, uh... This time, it would be very silly if we couldn't wear this one out. If we can just do one HP damage to this one, we can finish it with this and use the rest of our dice on this guy, so let's... Sure. And... Sure. Then again... This, no, this move will insta-kill Ogre immediately. Yeah, let's, uh, take that instead, and you can try to roll something else. Okay. Yeah, I'm not confident that between these three, we can get this ogre down to just 4 HP to kill it with this, so let's uh, let's keep rolling, I think. Yeah. Come on. I guess a regen effect is not bad. I'll take it. Come on. Well, you were about to take a lot of damage, so sure. Be defended. Finish that one. Thank you. You get healed and have some regen going. You get shielded. You go ahead and do two more damage. And we'll just try to finish you next turn. Okay. We can definitely get you finished this turn. For sure. One, two, three. Yeah, no, that should... This should do it by itself. Now it definitely will. Sure. Okay. A one. A two. Goodbye. There we go. And... Let's see. We could upgrade the soldier in a way that is just... Or the fighter to a soldier, which is basically just... All of these sides kind of up one additional pip, which is not bad. And in a way where the... Turning these two into ranged attacks is still just strictly an upgrade. Or the defender could become a ward. These are kind of like very linear upgrades to these two. A lot of times a uh, higher tier of fighter is an upgrade, but also like functions very differently. These two, we just happen to get uh, two upgrades that are just very linear in like, do the same thing you already do, but better. <laughs> this has a lot of potential damage output on the soldier and could use more HP I I'll take this one I think and this is still yeah we're not going to do like Obviously, we're not going to get through all 20 rounds here. Let's do one more fight, because this looks like kind of a boss fight. I don't know if I've ever encountered these three before. <laughs> they seem like they function very differently. Agnes here has moves to summon wolves and do one damage to everybody. But also two damage to the topmost enemy, the fourth HP. Okay, so as soon as we take that HP off, it will do two damage to Trapper, and there's no avoiding that. Geetha here, when hurt that far, would do two damage to the to the defender, and has a weakening cleave attack and a very, very damaging uh, heavy broom attack there, and Margret will do two damage to Caldera when taking that much damage and 
two poison damage or three damage descend also hits below the target. Ooh, I've never seen the descend effect before. Wow, you three are scary. Okay. Who's the most scary? Agnes could be bringing in more adds a lot, which is worrisome, but doesn't do a lot of damage herself. Geetha has some very strong attacks and could weaken us. Margaret is the one who could do three damage to all of us in one turn, which is very frightening. I feel like I want to take Margaret out first. I almost want to go in ascending order here. They don't have a lot of HP each, but boy. Scary. I think we can pretty reasonably get... Yeah, we can get one of them down to four HP and take... Let's take Geetha out this turn because Geetha's doing the most damage this turn. The other two are scary, but if we can only take one out in this turn, I think Geetha's the one. But maybe we can take more if we get super lucky. I kind of doubt it, but maybe. Eh. All right. Let's start with this and then boom. All right. So at least this turn, not nearly as bad. Hmm, they've both got one HP missing. Margaret really could do so much damage to us if she rolls one of those. And Agnes, yes, could summon a wolf, which is not too bad on its own unless she just starts summoning a bunch of them. But I think Margaret's more immediately scary. Let's work on Margaret. Or Magrat, I guess, however you want to say it. <laughs> This does nothing. No one's missing any HP yet, so... And it doesn't, like, apply an effect either. Eh. Whatever. <laughs> Bats. And... yeah. Oof. It's a bad poison. Okay, at least Margaret didn't get the very scary move. Um... Two damage to all damaged enemies. Four damage for three mana is a little better than just using burst. Although the damage is spread out. Hmm. I'll take him. I'll take him, but I'll keep re-rolling these. That's better damage. I'll take that. And this shield. Well, we can definitely take Magrat out, which will reduce the damage incoming. I don't know if it'll be enough to save, soldier? I think it's just poison alone that's going to be killing soldier at this point. We could use one Scald and one Renew, though, which would get Soldier back up to 4 HP, which would make up the difference. That'd be enough. Roll them one more time, see if we can get a little more damage output. Nice. Very. Uh, I'm good, thank you. Okay. So if we started with a Scald, which will result in damage to Trapper and Caldera, but it's okay. We, yeah, we can just finish him now. Awesome. So you're done. And you also will be done. There we go. We live. And the item we could choose is either a charged skull upon death for mana. So that's an interesting thing. Like if you've got a character who you think is going to be dying a lot, you could at least make it to where you're going to get four mana guaranteed every time they do to make up the difference for their absence a little bit, if nothing else. Or, fangs, add self-heal to the left side for, I guess, however many pips would be on that left side. So interesting, like, I think on the left side is a three damage attack. That would mean that if we put this on Soldier, Soldier, in addition to doing the three damage attack, could also be healing themselves for three, which is pretty cool. 
it does only help one character and only like on one side of the dice though which is not the most exciting or it certainly isn't likely to happen very often as opposed to this which would be much more of a certainty I like this one and I think I'd put it on the medic because that would guarantee us some heals if nothing oh no actually I guess if the medic's taken out I don't think we can use that spell Hmm. So maybe I'd put it a link on Defender. Yeah, actually, I like that on Defender a little better. Even if we lose our main shielding guy, we can still do some healing and damage output in a pinch if we must. So cool. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, to show you, since we... Yeah, we're kind of going a little long here. Let's duck out of here. It auto-saves at any point. I'm amused that they put a save button here that does nothing. Game saves automatically after each action. This button does nothing. You want to remove it? May require a quit load, but now it'll get rid of the save button, which is just a cute way of showing you, hey, you don't have to worry about it. You're fine. <laughs> which I find charming. If you want to see the list of unlocks, though, like I mentioned, there's a lot in this game. There are many different classes, each with a completely different dice loadout of all kinds of abilities and effects and things. Uh, 128 total. Here's all the ones that Trapper could potentially turn into. All of these, so many that so many of them function in wild different ways. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> uh, so many kinds of monsters, so many, so many items that you can get. There are so many different, uh, like modifiers and other things you can turn on if you want to make it more challenging. There's so many different modes, too. Like, I think you kind of unlock a lot of this stuff as you play and finish little rounds. But, uh, like, yeah, new cool mode unlocked. Shortcut. So these are the classic modes, easy, normal, and hard. There's other kinds of modes, though, like cool modes. Shortcut, which skips the first eight fights. If you want to just, like, jump ahead to higher difficulty without some of the upgrades you'd have gotten in those first eight fights, but it's faster. And there's a lot of different, like, modes in each of these categories. Crappy modes, like the demo. There's a so there's a free demo of this uh, at least on mobile. I think on PC as well, uh, where so you can just download it for free and just try 12 rounds of it and see if you like it. 12 fights. Uh, after that, you'd have to upgrade to the full version if you wanted to play any more of the game than that. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. I I've honestly I'm demoing this on PC right now. I play this on mobile all the time. It's a really good mobile game since it's saving constantly and you can just do a quick round or even just a single set of rolls. Uh, real quick when you're like standing in a line or something. The smaller screen is harder, like having to kind of, rather than mousing over and clicking on things to see descriptions, having to kind of like uh, press and hold on an object to see a description. But even on my phone, which I have a very small like screen for a modern smartphone, it still works fine. I'm actually amazed they managed to condense it. <laughs> uh, the game can work in both like vertical or landscape mode. It's a it's a really great uh, game, whether on PC or mobile, highly recommended. It's a great time. Let me show you what like hard starts out as, just to wrap us up. So we start out with four uh, randoms at the start again. I think this is mostly the same. I think healer might be, yeah, healer's a different uh, healing class than we started out with. And this is a different uh, fighter than we started out with, lazy. Two very good, like a good attack, a good shield, but very high likelihood of nothing which sucks but this time because we're on hard rather than getting to choose a really nice blessing at the start now we have to choose what curse do we want this would make it so that every monster on hit every time we attack them unless we hit them with like a ranged hit or something would do one damage to that person bummer heavy sleeper died last round heroes replace all sides with blank stasis this side cannot change whoa so, like, any hero, I guess, who died last round is useless in the next fight. Oof. Uh, tunnel vision. Two fewer level up choices on the way up and two fewer offered items on the way up. Oh, boy. Like, less scary immediately, but that could have a very big effect by the end of the run. That could make or break a run entirely by the end. Or... Fight 14 curse. Before fight 14, choose a tier 8 curse. Ooh. So basically, 
we got a tier four curse we're choosing between right now. We could basically kick that down the road. Not have to take a curse at all, but at fight 14, we have to choose one that's twice as bad. Interesting strategic choices that can completely shape how a run goes. Uh, like, you see what I mean by how much depth this game has for such a simple mechanical thing. I highly recommend it. It's a great time. But yeah, that is Slice and Dice. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you tomorrow for some more Elden Ring. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.